Hi everyone, this is John Dickinson from Motionworks.net, back with a short Cinema 4D tutorial for you. I've been working on this Lego flame, and I've got to a certain point and I thought it would be good to record my steps, because uh, there's some interesting things that I'm doing here, especially with the order of extrusion when I extrude this. What you can see here is my original topology. I actually started with a disk object down here, then I used the polygon pen tool, and I just populated that shape with polygons. And you can see I've been very careful to follow the contours of the shape because these different sections have to be extruded at different heights. So that was the first example that I created. And if we just turn off the subdivision surface, you can see some of those polygons look like they're overlapping. But I've actually used a brush tool. You can see I have this one point selected here and that's moving that around. But if I deselect, then I can literally move the shape around. So that's how, once I had the basic polygons in place, I just adjusted the shape. But you may notice that there's no edge loops in here. And that's what I did next. So you can see in this example, I've created edge loops. Let's just go into polygon mode and select that layer. I'll come into here. You can see I've colorized the different sections as well just to make it a little clearer and I've dropped materials on each of the selections and you can see it here I've got the materials and the selection tags. So if I just press UL for loop select and just come down to this loop here you can see I actually have a really nice edge loop there. I'm going to press NQ just to turn off my textures for a moment. So you can see the edge loops are in there. That's going to make it much easier when I create my extrusions. This one runs down through the circle and I did consider this and think maybe I should have this loop around here, but I was okay with it. And uh, I think once I add the extrusions, this is not going to be a problem. You see also I've added this little adjustment down here as well because down here at the bottom this is actually circular and this is um, an area that extrudes out so I'm going to have to work on that later once I've added the main extrusions so that's where I got to with the topology you can see I've got a problem with that one there that polygon let's just come back press Q I might need to move this up a little bit just like that. Okay. All right, so how do I extrude this? You can see on the example, you might not be able to see it. Let me just hide. Get rid of this one for now. And just hide the whole thing. You can see that the hole is indented. And this section here is probably the most extruded. And this is a little less extruded, and this is the least extruded. So how do I create those extrusions? Let's take a look. This is certainly one approach. I'm going to select the object, and I might just choose garage shading just to make that a little bit easier to see. Now the order in which you extrude things can make this really easy or it can be a little difficult. I found the best way is to do this. I'm going to go into polygon mode, select everything, and everything needs just a little extrusion, just like that. I've got the actual flame here on my desk so I know about how thick it is. Okay, so now I need to just turn my materials back on, NQ. Now I need to deselect this section, and I've already got a selection tag on that. So that is this section here. So if I select the tag and choose deselect polygons, that's going to deselect that. And I also want to deselect the hole. That's this one here. So deselect polygons. Okay. So now I want to do another extrusion. Like that, just a little. 
Now I want to deselect this section here. So that's this guy here. So deselect polygons. And as I mentioned, this section has the most extrusion. So I'm going to extrude that out like that. So if I just deselect that, now we get these really nice levels of extrusion. And obviously, next thing I'd do is drop that into a symmetry object. X, Y, that's what I want. Okay. And just drag that into my subdivision surface. Okay. So there we go. Now, obviously, the sides don't have any materials on them because I've got selection tags here. Now, I probably need to go through and add some sharpening cuts. I'm just thinking about that. It may not be necessary. There are some little circular indents in sections here, here, and here. These would be pretty straightforward to do. If I just select point mode, and I'm just going to move this point up a little bit. Just select that point. Just give myself a little more space here. Choose the bevel tool and just bevel that out. Now it's not a perfect circle there, it's probably a little bit small. So, what I need to do is just use the slide tool, just slide these across. Try that again. Maybe something like that. Now it's not perfectly circular, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is just select the whole thing. I'm going to use HB modeling tools selection to circle and HB's relax. And I'm going to scale that down. And now I do have a perfect circle. Extrude. Move tool. Screw that back. And once again, something like that. You can see we have some end gons here. UE to convert those to edges. Obviously it looks wrong because of these selection tags. I'm just going to remove those. I'm just going to pause now while I go ahead and do the other ones. Okay, so I've gone ahead and created those indents. Just quickly render that. Looking good. There are a couple at the top as well, just small ones. One here and one here, but I'm going to ignore those. The example that I actually have uh, in my hand here, it doesn't have any of these so I think it's worth to have a couple just to add a bit more detail, but um, I don't need to do the top ones. So once again, this is what I have so far. Looking pretty good. And you can see how working flat, creating the correct topology and then extruding afterwards makes everything much easier and much cleaner. And this technique is covered in detail by Toby Pittman on making it look grade 11. So I definitely recommend checking that out. And you can see I'm getting these hard lines on my preview render. So what I'm going to do is just select the Fong tag and just uncheck Use Edge Breaks. And that gets rid of that problem. I do have a problem with this hole here. I think it's because of this selection tag. Try that again. Just deselect that and get rid of this. Okay, that's got rid of it. Okay, so I probably want to round these edges a little bit. What I can do is just select. Let's see, select that and just pull it back a little bit. Like that. I'm 
Okay, so now what I need to do is create the circular section here. Just like this. Bring them out like that. Once again, you can see how getting the right topology flat before you start adding any extrusion makes it so much easier. Something like that. Okay. Can't work in symmetry here. Maybe just pull these back a little bit. That's pretty good. Okay, so now I need to add the circle at the bottom so I can extrude that out because remember this is a piece of Lego. So I think the best way to do that is to just, let's see, just select these. If I get this wrong, I can always try something else. Just delete those. Just select these. That may be good. I may need to do it from there. Let's just see. I'm going to scale that in. Should be okay. Okay, so I can't do that while it's in symmetry. Let's see. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to collapse this down. Press C. Bring that back out. Back in there. Select like this whole thing. Let's see if this works. Oops, don't want to close it. I often get these two confused. This one here is to make quads. This one here is to make a circle. Just scale this down. You see how easy HP modeling tools makes it. Now the points aren't quite evenly spaced. I'll just scale it down a little bit more. And you can use this one here. This is HP even distribution, just to distribute those evenly. I'm just going to rotate that round a bit. I can always pull these ones out to give myself a little bit more space here. Let's just make a circle once again, scale that down again, make sure that everything's flat, seems to be, just going to select all those points, not quite, make sure they're all selected, press T for scale, scale that down to zero, okay, I probably need to just give myself a bit more space here. Okay, so I've just reevaluated how I'm going to approach this and I've decided to actually select this entire section. Before I didn't select these polygons here. I'm going to select these ones as well. This is going to make it a little bit easier and mean I'm not going to have to shift so many points around to give me enough room to make this circle big enough. So I'm going to use HB delete to delete those polygons and the points at the same time. And UL select boundary loop is selected just grab that there and i'll do a scale just like that actually maybe a little bit bigger okay so now i can use hb selection to circle i'm just going to scale them in again and i need to actually i probably should have done that first hp even distribution doesn't matter just rotate that around And once again, 
selection to circle. So now I've got a bit more space in here and it's a bit neater. I haven't got these squished polygons. And it might be big enough just like this. Just use the slide tool. Just shift these out of the way a little bit. It gives me a little bit more space. And here as well. It's pretty much on the money. It doesn't need to be exact. Not doing these Lego pieces necessarily to scale. Let's again scale that up like that. Just check that everything's flat. Looks pretty good. Okay, so scale it down. It's not quite centered, but that's okay as well. It's pretty much the same size. Scale that down again. You see it's got a rounded end there. It doesn't matter so much for what I'm doing because this flame is going to be attached to a hoverboard. So you won't see that. But let's just have a look at how you might want to add a rounded end to it. And you could create you know, a hemisphere and you could stitch it onto that. It's got 20 edges. Another way is to use soft selection with the move tool. Let's take a look at how you might do that. So the edge is selected. I'm going to use scale just to give myself a loop there. Then I'm going to come down here. I've got the collapse tool down here in my most frequently used modeling tool. So I'm going to collapse that in. UB to select that ring. I'm going to press Alt X. Again, probably that's enough for it just to add some loops. I'm going to select the middle point here. And I might just add a KL, just add a loop up here. Keep that middle point selected. Now I want soft selection. If I was going to apply that or turn that on without HP modeling tools, I'd come over to my move tool and enable it here. But there is a HB toggle soft selection button. And you can see my radius is set to 20, strength is 47 at the moment, just based on what I used previously. And if I just pull that down, that's not too bad. Let's just increase the radius a little bit. That's going to be too much. We don't want to affect the top. Something like that. And to round this section out here, and you can play around with it a little bit, but one, one way I could do that is to just select that loop and just choose Preserve Curvature with the Slide tool and just add that extra little loop in there. Turn that on. That's not perfect, but you get the idea. And this is just one way to do this. Another way might be to use the bevel tool, just increase the subdivisions. But it's good to know a variety of ways to do the same thing. Looking pretty good. And that all started with the flat topology and all of the extrusion and all of the indents were added after that. And then finishing with this extrusion down the bottom here. It's a bit of stretching with these polygons here, but the render doesn't show anything too untoward with that. So I think that's ready to go. So hopefully there's been something useful in there for you. For now, this is John from Motionworks. Have fun, be creative, and keep practicing your modeling.